Here's how you can add a timer to your videos, whether you want a countdown or simply a timer. Let's jump inside of Kaden Live and get started. So the first thing we'll do is look for the effect timer and you can add the timer either to master or a track or simply a clip. For now, I'll start with master and then I'll show you how you can diversify the usage. So I'll drag it onto master and here we have it. Let me make some more space for it. Now, this is a very straightforward effect. At the very top, we have the font, so we can choose our font family. So I'll click on the drop down. I'll start typing the name of the font that I want, which is Courier Tin Pitch. Next, we can choose the font style, which is between italic and normal. I'll leave it to normal. We have the font size to change the size of the font, obviously. The font weight kind of takes it from normal to bold to black as you increase it. Now, I think this will depend on the font that you're using. Then we have the outline width, but we don't have an outline color just yet. So this won't really do anything. Finally, we have the padding, which is this box around our text that you can see. It has a transparency. This is the transparency here from background color. So we'll get into that in just a moment. Next up at the bottom here, we have horizontal alignment. I like to set it to center and then for vertical alignment, I do middle. This puts our text right in the middle here of our monitor. Next, we have the format. For the format, you get to choose between seconds, milliseconds, minutes, seconds, hours, etc. So just for this, I'm going to go with minutes, seconds, and milliseconds, just so you can see the frames counting. But just note that the milliseconds are counting from 100th of a second. So it won't be 30 frames at the end. So it's going to be up to 100. So for the start, it's when does the timer start? And since we have it applied to master, it's covering everything that's on the timeline. So if I were to simply play back here, you'll see that it starts from the very first frame and starts counting up. If I change the start up to, let's say, for example, five seconds, it won't start counting up until we reach five seconds. You can see here I have five seconds. And once I hit playback, it starts counting. So that's pretty much what the start determine. When does it start playing? Relatively to the beginning. And when you apply it to master, the beginning is the very first frame. Then we have the duration. The duration right now is 23 seconds and 10 frames because this clip down here, if I double click on it, is 23 seconds and well, 11 frames, but technically 10 based on where the playhead is going to stop. So you can shorten the timer if you want to, where it would stop counting at the 15 second mark, as we see up here. Next up, we have the offset. With the offset, you can start the timer later in time. So for example, if I were to set it to five seconds, the timer is going to start at five on the very first frame. So if you were to combine this with the start, if we push the start to five, or let's push the start to three. So once it hits frame three, it will start counting up from five. So I'll put these back to their default. After that, we have the direction. You have up and down. Up is a timer, down is a countdown. So if you set it to down, it's going to count down from 23, which is the duration, all the way down to zero. If you were to change the duration up here, so if we decrease the duration, you'll see that the timer uh, shortens and will reach zero a lot sooner. So around 13 frames earlier. When you're counting down, when you increase the offset, let me increase this over here first, the duration. When you increase the offset, it's going to add seconds to the timer. So instead of being 23, we now have it up to 30 because we added seven seconds to it. And it's going to count all the way down and stop at seven seconds at the end. So little things like that. Next up, right under it, we have the keyframe or the keyframe timeline, you could say. And under that, we have position. So you can keyframe the position and you can also keyframe the size. But the size is not exactly going to do what you want it to or what you would expect it to. So instead, it's best to use the font size, although I don't think you can keyframe the font size. So with the position, if you have the monitor edit mode enabled, you can simply left click, hold and drag your timer anywhere you please. You can also keyframe the position of your timer. So for example, if I jump to the first frame over here and I center it using the alignment tool, 
and I have it centered, then I move forward a little bit, I add a keyframe and I can then move it to, let's say a bottom corner. And now if we play back, it will simply move down to that bottom corner. And of course you have the keyframe interpolation modes, so you can have it move in a more dynamic way. And lastly, we have the colors. So you can choose your font color, either by using the color picker here and choose a color anywhere you want, or you can click on the color selector here and pick a color. We have the background color, which by default has this semi-transparency. If you want to remove the transparency altogether, so remove the background, simply click on the color, click on the plus, and then slide this opacity slider all the way down, hit select, and there we have it, there's no more background. For the outline color, I'll pick a dark color from up here. And now if I increase the outline width, we now have an outline. I'll increase the font weight as well, make it thicker, and maybe the font size. Now you can't control the kerning or the letter spacing. So if you want the numbers to be closer, you probably have to choose a font that has less kerning. So I'll bring back the slightly transparent background. And now, if you want the timer to start at a different location or you only want it to be visible at a certain point and you're applying it to master, all the way at the top of the timer, you have this magnifying glass, which is use effect zone. If I click on it, we can now set an endpoint. So up here we have the endpoint and right next to it, we have the out point. So we can determine when we want the timer to start and when we want the timer to end. And now obviously this is not 23 seconds worth of timeline. So if you simply adjust the duration here, it resets and recalculates it and adjusts for the proper value. And we now have the corresponding amount of time from the timeline. Same goes for up. If ever you see that the values don't match, simply adjust the duration and it will reset to the proper value. So that is one way you can control the in and out point of the timer. Uh, the offset and all of these still apply, but it starts from this endpoint. So where this effect zone starts is where the start and the duration and the offset are calculated from. Now, another way you can apply the timer in a more dynamic way, you could say, I'll disable the effect zone, I'll collapse the timer for now. I'll go to the project bin, I'll create a color clip. I'll choose a gray color here. I'm going to rename this first to timer. And inside of the effects, I'll look for transparency. I'll add the transparency to the color clip and I'll drop the slider all the way down. I'll disable the keyframes because there's no point to it. And now when we drag this color clip onto the timeline, there's nothing, it's fully transparent. So I can grab the timer from master, I'll drop it onto the color clip and I'll disable it inside of master. And we now have our timer directly on this color clip. Now the start of the timer is relative to the beginning of the color clip. So wherever the color clip starts is where the zero mark uh, is set at. So the same rules apply. You have the start that you can modify so that it starts later in time, but relative to the color clip and so on and so forth. Now, if you have a font and colors and a whole setup that you use by default or that you would like to have as a default, once you have it set up, you can simply go up to the timer effect, click on this little gear here or this setting and save it as a preset. That way, every time you apply the timer, you can simply choose your preset and have everything set up so you can skip these initial steps and then do the modifications that you like to do to it from that point on. All right. So I have a Kofi link down in the description if you'd like to support the channel. You can click on this playlist here to learn more about Kaden Live and thanks for watching.